channel. My name is Keanu and together we are going to watch a great game of Starcraft 2 between Gumiho and Raynor. As usual I'm going to see it for the first time. We are going to see it together and have a lot of fun. It's a long game, probably uh, you know by now if it's 20 minutes it's going to be full of non-stop action. We're talking about two professional players. The best where can be from Italy and one of the best Korean. And when I say the best where can be from Italy, uh, Raynor, also known as Riccardo Romitti, is the best player that Italy can offer. From 2016 onwards, he is winning each and every game uh, in his own country. While Gumiho is one of the best uh, Terran where can be in Korea. But in Korea the competition is way, way, way tougher. Interesting uh, story. Rainer also has a little brother, that, uh, three years uh, younger, that also plays, called uh, Baby Marine. And for uh, Gumiho, an interesting fact, uh, he's also known as... Uh, yeah, his actual ID also means the mystical nine-tailed fox. So it's something magical about him. He is the only player today to play as random in a GSL individual event. So until he decided to remain Terran, he used to play random. It doesn't matter. If it's a Zerg, if it's a Protoss, that good he was. That good he was. And he still is. Uh, he was also nicknamed uh, Towel Terran because he plays with a towel on his mouse due to his... Uh, Hyperhidrosis, I hope I pronounced it correctly, it's an excessive sweating of his hands. So far standard opening, we have a command center and a hatchery. Raynor is doing extremely well lately. Uh, representing Italy, as I said, uh, he is the first and only Italian player to qualify for a GSL event, to play in a World Champion Series fi uh, final, and uh, he is one of the youngest uh, players that ever is the final. In the meantime, a Reaper versus a Zergling, 1-0 Reaper. The squadron of uh, Zergling just making sure to have map awareness. The Terran is building a factory, a barracks, standard opening so far. The second Reaper trying to harass as much as possible. And while this is happening, everyone grab your popcorn if you haven't already. As I said, it's a decent long game. And we are going to have a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. The fur hatchery. Raynor is a little bit greedy. The overall is trying to scout. To see if something unusual is happening. And also to see the timing of the command center. At this level, any bit of clue is important. Because this is the point of view for Raynor. And this is the point of view of uh, Gumiho. And they need to know what is happening. See, he has no vision of its base. Luckily for us, we can see everything. A Viking making sure to kill the overlords, to keep them at bay. Why not a little bit of a supply block? So, how does it work for those of you that are new at this uh, amazing game? If you are a Terran, you have to buy, build supply depots. The more supply depots you have, the more workers and, uh, and units you can have. For the Zerg, it's the opposite. You need to not have a solid structure, but an overlord. More overlords you have, more supply. So far... There is not that a big difference. Gomiho being a Terran is expected to have less units. What I really like about Raynor, his creep spread. Uh, where did I have seen creep, uh, creep uh, like this? At Scarlet and uh, 
obviously, <laughs> the king, none other than zero. The pip is extremely important. These four queens are trying their best. And here is the viking, killing another overlord. So to zero, denying the vision for, uh, from the zerg. Hmm, Hellions. If they plunge into a mineral line, that's it. But so far they are used to keep some of the creep. Two more sub -A. Nice around. Are they going to achieve more than killing just some Zerlings? No. This mineral line looked like very tempting for a second. Now counter-attack. Or just a scouting party. One, two, three, four bases. For uh, Raynor and one, two, three. Just a bit of action. Counter-attack. Is it going to cut it? No. I also have a Thor. This looks impressive. And we are going to see a drop Thor action. It's extremely efficient. Where he is going to go? Uh -huh. Direct into the main base. And while this is happening, these Hylians are going to distract a little bit. And here is the Tor. The Tor was already spotted. And let's see how much damage it can be done. Tor drop. I haven't seen it in a while now. And the Medivac immediately saved it. Tor drop. Wow, this looks impressive. I will not want to mess with this guy. Let me show you my little friends. Killing everything that he can get on. One more, yes, excellent. How many kills so far? Seven. That's a hero tour. He will have a monument in his name. Another overlord is in danger, but now the queens are here. And the Medivac lost already half of his health. Killing some creep tumors. And while this is happening, we have another distraction with Hellions. Non stop action already started. The queens. <laughs> this is like uh, the 300. You shall not pass. In terms of army size, uh, almost equal. 86 versus 69, not a big deal. Depends also on the quality of the units. And now, these cheeky Hellions are trying to go into the mineral lines. So the Thor destroys some of the crypt tumor to make their entering. So, one drone, that's it. Ah, something that we haven't seen in a while. Swarm hosts. They take a lot of supply. Now we have the blue hell Hellions. Blue flame is very useful. Instead of the red one, this is more efficient when it has to deal with Zerlings. See how easily they melt. But they are dealt with. Never ever underestimate the Italian. The queens are doing their best. And excellent scan. So the swarm hosts were immediately identified. I also have some bailings. Swarm hosts are extremely efficient because. They spread with Locust, that can do a lot of damage, and it's free damage. See? A Thor already dead. And while this is happening, this base is attacked. 
extremely good game. The problem for Stormhost that takes time. And what do you have here? Benches. We are now clocked. You do not see them. Unless uh, you need an observer for this. Interesting play. So we saw a Tor drop. Bailings. Banshee. Swarm host. And now we are ready for another wave of attack. Are we going to achieve much? Let's see together. Each time the locusts go, something is going to die. A hellbat, a tank, free damage. Okay, in terms of resources lost, you see heavily favoring Zerg, and this is not a good uh, time for the Terran. Gomiho is a little bit of a issue now, he has, a issue. he has to kill the storm host, he cannot take this punishment, economical punishment forever. And while this is happening, we have Hellbats trying their best. And the new command center is being taken in the bottom corner. Bottom central corner. These are mules, we are extremely efficient to gather minerals and the planetary but somehow Raynor knew about it and is trying to prevent it the bailings are here, the bailings yes now the workers are equal and the planetary is destroyed and while this is happening also we have another engagement over here the swarm host are a real problem especially in the early game you can counterattack them uh, usually with uh, ghosts. They have an ability called Sniper. And now this story is dead. Non stop action as promised. A lot of Tors. Cyclones. I'll just let you enjoy. The problem with Tors, we are slow moving units. And the Encrypt Zerg units move very fast. You need to catch them somehow. These benches are being annoying. They cannot go closer, the Spore Clorer can see them. We also have here an Overseer. And the Queens. How many you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's a big amount of uh, tours, a big investment for from Gumiho. And now the storm hosts are ready. Ideal is to send your locust to waves uh, in, into the base of uh, your opponent. Do maximum free damage. Yeah. Wizards have no chance whatsoever, but while the Terran units are on the opposite side of the map. We have a counter attack with Zerlings. Hellbats are extremely useful in taking some of the damage. Doors can be repaired. So, a couple of workers here or a mule drop to save this heroic Thor. 19 kills and he's dead. Look at their firepower. Immediately the hatchery was killed. In terms of army, Raynor still has an advantage, but this can be misleading because the Stormhosts take a big chunk of it. The Queens are here with an Overseer. And another counter attack, non stop counter attacks. Again, the mirrors are like that. And now the Terran is going to lose another one. One, but this is in low health. 
and the counter attack non stop. This is what you have to do. Halions to put Halions everywhere because the Zerlings are very fast, they can be in a lot of places. While the Thor barely can move. Gumiho scanned, saw this uh, new expansion over here, but the swarm is on its way. Oh, that was painful to watch. A lot of bailings were destroyed. And now Revengers with swarm hosts. And while this was happening, the base of uh, Raynor was destroyed. So, eye for an eye. In terms of worker, Raynor has doubled the amount of Gumiho. He can afford to lose. The Terran obviously can have a comeback because of the mules that you have from the Orbital Command Center. And now another Thor drop. Two of them at once. Uh, these stores are dead. Well done, Raynor. Congratulations, the Italian won again. See you for the next match. Thank you for watching. Hello, guys. My name is Keanu, and I'm back. Inside or out, this is the question of the day. Who is going to win? Gumiho from Korea or Rainer from Italy? I'm very excited for this uh, pro match of StarCraft 2. As usual, I'm seeing it for the first time and together we are going to have a lot of fun. It's like a half an hour long game, so expect a lot of uh, back and forth, a lot of non-stop action as usual. At the beginning we have standard opening, Raynor sending the Overlord to scout, while here we have a barracks and a wall off with a supply depot. Both players are extremely good. Raynor, uh, it's uh, one of the best in terms of uh, Zerg that Europe can have, except Serral, who is the undisputed king, while uh, Gumiho is one of the best Korean Terran there can be. We are both young, energetic, and I'm pretty sure they are not going to disappoint us. Like, come on, half an hour? It must be awesome. Also, a lot of uh, minerals on this map. Probably we are going to split it in two, like this part is going to belong to Rain or this part to Gumiho and we are going to attack each other, counter attack, attack in the same time, probably we are going to have some dropships, we are going to find out. A second command center for uh, Gumiho and a second hatchery for Raynor. Standard opening so far. And the spawning pool is ready. A queen already has started. And probably we are going to see some zerlings. To have a little bit of map control and awareness. While two marines are already trained. Where are you going? In the direction of the overlord. Overlord should uh, better go somewhere else. He's not going to be safe in a couple of seconds. A raffinery, the second one. Gas is extremely important. The more gas you have, uh, the better your chances to have uh, better units, to have upgrades. And the two Zerlings are heading. Waiting for their bodies. Hey bodies, wait for me. Two Marines versus four Zerlings. Yeah, four uh, Marines versus four Zerlings is never a good uh, <laughs> time to be a Zerling. Four Zerlings versus two Marines. Eh. So already we have six uh, Marines and another Dirt Zerling. In terms of resources, already the Terran has a small, small, tiny advantage. These are the three Zerlings, 25 uh, minerals for each, 75 in total. This one is going the opposite side to scout. 
already two aliens from the factory and other two in production. We have the stat port. So already action. Oh, Queen was killed. But both Marines are dead. So four Marines, 200 minerals for a Queen, 150. Not bad. So in terms of resources, 300, 300. It's even. The power of the Zerg, already the third hatchery has been acquired. And now we have multiple fronts to deal with. Here we have the Zerlings for a counterattack and the Queens trying to spread the creep and to defend the homeland. The Zerg homeland. The Overlord spotting exactly what is happening. This is the point of view that Raynor has of the map. And this is what uh, Gumiho sees. But luckily for us we see everything. For Hellions, they are extremely good if they can go to the mineral lines. The Zerlings are going to do a little bit of economic damage. But luckily Hellions are already here to save the day. The Queens. The Chris spread is uh, extremely well done. And now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's like a train. A Hellion train. Are we going to achieve a lot? Not likely. We have to pull back. One of them is seriously injured. Ah, and the Banshee. The Banshee is going straight to the mineral lines with cloaking activated. It's going to try to kill as many workers as possible. But we already have detection in the form of a spore crawler, so nothing the Banshee can do. In the meantime, Hellions are killing some of the Zerlings. Already you see the difference. Raynor lost uh, twice the amount of resources, but it's okay, he can afford, he has three bases. Have we started some of the upgrades? Only now evolution chambers are being built. While for the Terran... Yeah, already. 1-1. One, one. This is attack, this is defense. Increasing the survivability of... Uh, survivability. <laughs> As you already noticed, I'm not a native English speaker. If I may say so. So, some of the words are more like uh, not 100% accurate but it's okay a wall off of supply depots and the aliens just hanging around but it's not never ever a good uh, time to just stay and wait because the <laughs> the zerg especially Raynor is going to overwhelm you uh, Raynor already has more workers 66 versus uh, 58 the army are pretty similar. The huge advantage that Zerg has is map awareness with the creep and also on creep. Everything moves faster for the Zerg, especially the queens. Bailings. They are rolling, rolling. They keep rolling, destroying. The tank. The tank uh, provides uh, cover for the marines, so in case Zerg tries to destroy these rocks to open another avenue pathway, the tank is uh, going to prevent it. And now the action is going to hit it up. This group of marines are going to try their best to keep the creep. And luckily for them to medivax to safely take them away. Well dropped over here to destroy, deny some of the uh, impo <laughs> impossible. But you saw the tank co covering them. 
the scans are not uh, free, yes, they are free, but uh, you are using the energy vet, otherwise you could have used to have a mule, another wall off. So Gumiho is playing extremely defensive. He's preparing for the long game that is going to be, but he doesn't know this yet, we know because it's like half an hour. Oh, excellent. Some of the bailings connected. And while this is happening, a counter attack. Yeah, you build the wall over here, but here you are exposed. But it's easier to protect if you have to protect only one side. These uh, hellbats are extremely good in soaking some of the damage. Now, from a distance, the tank can destroy, but from close up. Is uh, sitting duck. A lot of bailings. Probably Raynor is going to run them directly into the Gumiho defense. And while this is happening, we have a counter attack. Gumiho really needs to make sure to, creep the, to keep the creep uh, further away from his base. And now. The tank is in danger, and they are rolling. Yes, smashing through the defense of the Terran. Destroying as much as possible. This tank is dead already. Overall, uh, not very efficient trade. Look at the resources, twice in terms of uh, resources for uh, Raynor. But he can afford like one, two, three, four, five bases against one, two, three, and a four that was recently acquired. The mules were dropped, that I told you about. And Raynor keeping half of his forces uh, on the right, the rest on the left. And here you see this circle, is because uh, here we have this sensor tower that gives vision to the Terran. These units are dead, and another hatcher is being planted. The Widow Mine, 6 kills, not bad. Widow Mines are extremely efficient because they can act as a scout, they can see where uh, your enemy is coming, and also the mine itself can blow a lot of Zerlings. Non stop action. These Medivacs, are they going to the main base? No. Nope. They change their mind. So on the right we have Zer Zerlings are very fast, together with Bailings they can deny the Marines extremely easily. The sensor tower precisely put to cover this part of the map. Maybe another one here. Now we're we going to go to this base. No, yes. The steam pack was activated, take some of the energy. They were a real uh, Terran unit, just a decoy that overseers can uh, deploy, like fake marines, and you send them uh, to your opponent base to find out what is happening without losing any of your Zerlings. In terms of workers, Raynor <laughs> getting extremely greedy, 97 versus 77. Both players are maxed out, just waiting for the right moment to do economical damage. So far the map is split in two, but they are running out of resources in their main base. So this base and this base are going to be extremely important. If Raynor is able to capitalize and have this base as well, he is going to do just fine in terms of resources, because overall he is losing way more than Gumiho. And now a big counter-attack. Not dealing too much damage. What just happened? 
A suicide marine trying to take on its own. Wow, that was a nice uh, detonation. A second sensor tower. Providing cover for this area. And now, a night swarm. Is it going to be ready in time? Or is it just a distraction? No, just a distraction. We also see here we have a ghost. The ghosts are extremely good. They have the ability called Snipe and the Vipers the ability to Yonk. Basically, they are uh, extremely useful because you put tanks in the second line of defense where they can do a lot of splash damage, but the Vipers deny this uh, just by bringing them in front, making them vulnerable. Run, run forest. Too late. There's three medivacs, just wait for an opening, but creep is everywhere. The zerg is everywhere. You go on the right, you have zerglings. You go on the left, you have zerglings and bailings. Scanning to see everything. See? He now sees everything. Now this bunch of marines are being rescued. A lot of resources for Raynor, so he can afford to lose several armies. Not running out of money. The tank was killed. Maybe Raynor tries to get rid of some of the supplies. Tries again with the Night to Swarm. These are like the SWAT medivacs, bringing uh, wherever it is needed. 15,000 uh, resources versus uh, 7,000, 16 already. So throwing a lot of units. But Kumiho is too good for this. He immediately is able to do a strategic retreat. Now command center, probably is going to be transformed into planetary fortress. Excellent connection. So what uh, Gumiho just did, made sure to kill some of the bailings and then immediately evacuated. And apparently there was some lag problem. Go, 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 three, two, one. A lot of updates, upgrades for weapons. And now a big confrontation. Now Rainer decided to go back. Here we have the planetary fort is the wall off. It's very hard. <laughs> really Rainer? Trying to take this space? You think Gumiho is going to allow you? Well, he can try. If he is able to get this uh, base, he's going to have way, way, way too many resources. And as you can see, Gumiho is running out of them. And this uh, base, you already have 20, uh, 12,000 uh, minerals. A lot of ghosts. Zerlings, uh, luckily for Rainier, does not uh, require too much gas. Zero, in fact. But the bailings do. So it's also a resource uh, that we need to keep an eye on. The coins are here. Trying to spread the kill creep as much as possible. Snipes everywhere. How many kills? One kill for this sniper. And Raynor. Yeah. 
Nada snipe. So Gumi Ho really needs to deny this base. Yeah, Reno just uh, try to limit uh, the damage by cancelling. And now we have a new command center that is going to be transformed into an orbital, into a fortress. <laughs> And another one taking this base. So both players are trying their best to take the same areas. Here we have a liberator to protect it. A lot of scans to see exactly where the Zerg units are. And immediately they are here. They need some anti-air. This base was denied. Is now in fully control of Gumio. A lot of mules were dropped. Immediately the income is increasing. Now it's not that a big difference as it used to be. 6,000 versus 13,000. The creep uh, denied the command center ability to land. All the workers are just staying. And now we have one, two, three spore crawlers four with this one and while this is happening a lot of crypt tumors how many ghosts at least ten a run by was tried and finally So strange to see an attack happening with uh, spore crawlers. And finally, higher tier unit, uh, Broodlords. The ghosts are in uh, stealth mode. So you actually cannot see them. This is why you have the overseers all coming. But if you snipe them, the infestor are also here, the infestors. And is Raynor going to be able to break Terran defense? In terms of army size, uh, Gumiho has an advantage. But this is something to be seen. The huge advantage of Broodlords is uh, the distance, the sheer distance from where they can attack. The problem is we are not very, very fast. So if you scan, you know exactly where they are. This is free damage, what is happening right now. Broodlings uh, don't cost anything. And they continue to throw them. But snipes are very efficient. Nine kills on this sniper. Twelve kills on the other one. So basically you are trying to use your banelings to kill the ground units that can attack air. We have the Corruptors to take care of the Vikings. Sniping everywhere. Yeah. Oh, a lot of workers. So now, in terms of worker 41 versus 72. Awesome battle. I like it. I hope you like it as well. So Raynor was able to deny from Gumio this base while he is acquiring this base from the upper left top corner. A lot of static defense is being added. This command center is like, hey, what are you doing? This is my base. Six kills on the tour. And now surround. The tour is dead. Uh, and all the workers. Only 21 workers is never a good idea. Because this bank 2000 is not enough. Why Raynor can easily rebuild its army.
the brute lords are continuing to harass with broodlings for liberators where like uh, aerial siege uh, tanks are not very efficient in a straight uh, air to air combat battle but they are very efficient against ground units anything that goes here with uh, kill zone there are way too many brute lords Forty-three thousand resources for Raynor versus twenty-eight for Gumio. This is a methodical approach. And why this is happening? The Terran is also attacking, knowing that uh, the major armada for Zerg is in the opposite direction. So this base is killed, but it's almost out of minerals. This base is uh, the only one for uh, Raynor that actually supplies minerals. Uh, this one but has only a few patches remaining. And for uh, Gumio, we have only here. Dropping a lot of mules, his income is going to rise sharply. See, from 100 minerals to 100 immediately, plus 1,600, 700. Why Raynor spent almost all of his bank, he has only 3,000 left. Now attacking the main uh, base of Gumio. Trying to reacquire this base over here. But Gumiho is denying it. I would just love the how Thor looks like. This massive mechanical giants. I believe they were the source of inspiration for Avatar Mech Soldiers. I don't know if you have seen the movie, but they look pretty much the same. Also in the Matrix, in Zion they have something similar. These pork crawlers are going to give for protection against aerial units. Look how they move forward. Here is a good base to attack. Luckily the Terran units uh, can lift up uh, structures and just go away. So you are going to attack me? I'm going. We have here the overseers to see the ghost. There are a lot of ghosts available. We can go into stealth mode. And is Gumiho able to survive this onslaught? In terms of minerals, we are both equal now. It's an intense match. The ghost, are they going to be able to snipe? This overseer is preventing them from getting closer. The final epic battle I hope of the game I don't know if they can continue the map is literally running out of resources and where is the problem for Gumiho in terms of resources the difference is not uh, that much anymore and we have here the ultra Lisk. we are hungry hungry beasts and Raynor is the winner Excellent game. Thank you for watching and see you next time.